Their assassinations caused major uproar and changed history forever. In this list, we'll be looking at the assassinations that managed to stop the Butcher of Prague, and of course the men who killed major heads of state and famous presidents. So without further ado, let's look at the top 10 deadliest assassins. Let's dive right in, shall we? Number 10. Joseph Gabczyk and Jan Kubisz a lot of talk about people killing important members of our society, and we start this list off with a duo that saved thousands if not millions of people. Why? It's because this dynamic duo managed to kill the leader of the German secret police of World War II, Reinhard Tristan Eugenheidrich. If you think that name sounds tough, wait till you see what he did. The man was named as governor, protectorate of Bohemia and Moravia. He killed so many Czechs and so many Jewish people that he was called the Butcher of Prague. He almost became governor of Paris, but the British intelligence intervened and the decision was scrapped, to say the least. While he was on his way to Prague Castle in May 27th of 1942, they ambushed him after having parachuted in near Prague beforehand. After the plan to shoot Reinhardt fell through, his partner Kubisch threw a modified anti-tank grenade at his car, wounding him with shrapnel. He died 11 days after the assassination, thus saving the lives of thousands and thousands of people. Number 9. Ramon Marcader. He was a Spanish communist that managed to kill one of the most prominent political figures in the USSR. He was tasked with killing Leon Trotsky and a very famous opponent of Stalin. When Stalin rose to power, he knew that Leon Trotsky would be causing problems in his communist regime. That's why he decided to exile him to Mexico City. This is where Ramon Marcader comes into picture. The Spanish communist was part of the NKVD. He was hired as a Soviet spy and was given the task to smash that like button if you haven't done so already. But no, he was actually given the task to kill Trotsky. Ramon first befriended the socialist who oftentimes used to give Trotsky half-finished manuscripts and ask him for an opinion. On the 21st of August 1940, Ramon visited him one last time. He gave the man another one of his manuscripts and as he was reading it, Marcadier pierced his skull with an ice pick, killing him instantly. When he was interviewed afterwards, he said that Trotsky's scream was the longest and loudest he had ever heard. Number 8. John Wilkes Booth He's perhaps the most famous assassin in the entire world, as he managed to kill one of the greatest, if not the greatest presidents in the United States, Abraham Lincoln. Why did he do it? It's because he didn't approve of Lincoln's decision to abolish slavery. Having a racist motive and being a Confederate sympathizer, Booth wanted to kill the president as well as the vice president and the secretary of state, William H. Seward. The only one this small group managed to kill was Ole Abe. While Lincoln was attending a play at Ford's Theater in Washington, D.C. on April 14, 1865, John Wilkes Booth snuck behind them in the private booth and with one single shot, decided the fate of the president. He was dead the next morning. As he was fleeing from the police, they still managed to find him 12 days later at a barn in Maryland. While his co-conspirator surrendered, Booth stayed in the barn and the police were forced to light it on fire. As he fled the burning building, one of the officers shot him in the neck, paralyzing him instantly. The man died a few hours later. Number 7. Lee Harvey Oswald one of the most controversial and most popular assassinations of our time is the one where the 35th president of the United States was shot while riding in his presidential motorcade through Daly Plaza in Dallas, Texas. The police say that on this historic day, November 22nd, 1963, there was an entire organization behind this monstrous crime. The most disturbing footage was that from the Zapruder film, Frame 313. In it, you will see the president's face explode as the bullet shot him right in the face. The officers that stood nearest to the car couldn't believe their eyes. The man that delivered this deadly shot? It was Lee Harvey Oswald. While the motorcade rushed the president to the nearest hospital, the police caught Lee just 70 minutes later after the fatal shot. He was immediately taken to jail, and as he was being transferred on November 24, 1963, Jack Ruby, a nightclub owner, shot Lee Harvey Oswald in the stomach and killed him. It's a weird form of justice, but we'll take it. Number 6. Sakoman Tylerian while we have him listed as an assassin in this video, he is actually considered an Armenian national hero by some. Why? 
because Salomon Talirian is a man that actually was behind the assassination of the Grand Vizier of the Ottoman Empire. The mission was called Operation Nemesis, and Salomon delivered the fatal blow to Talat Pasha on March 15, 1921. The reason Talirian is considered a national hero was because he killed the man responsible for the Armenian Genocide and sentenced to death by the Turkish courts, Marshal of 1919 through 1920. Talat Pasha was the main orchestrator of the genocide, and Salomon delivered the justice before the government ever got the chance to do so. He was even found not guilty by the German court after a two-day trial. Talirian was once again a free man. Number 5. Mark David Chapman John Lennon, the lead singer in the legendary rock band The Beatles, was shot dead on December 8, 1980. The man behind the murder was none other than Mark David Chapman. The man even asked Lennon for his autograph and took a picture with the famous singer just a few hours prior to the assassination. While Lennon was walking home with his wife, Yoko Ono, five shots were fired from the back. Four of them found Lennon and the man fell to the ground. While waiting for the police to arrive, Chapman opened J.D. Salinger's The Catcher in the Rye and started reading it. When they arrested him, the assassin intended to cite a few lines from the book. He was sentenced to life in prison and is still alive to this day. When the police questioned his motives, he said the singer became too famous, so he ended his glory. Number 4. James Earl Ray That's the name of the man responsible for the death of one of the greatest minds of our generation, Martin Luther King Jr. Being the racist that he was, James Earl J. couldn't believe that the African American population could finally enjoy the same rights as Caucasian Americans. So he decided to take it upon himself to deliver the quote unquote justice to Martin Luther. If I had it all to do over again, I, I, I really don't see how I could have done anything different. While staying at the Lorraine Hotel in Memphis, Tennessee, on April 4th, 1968, he shot the activist and killed him. He immediately pleaded guilty for his crimes and was convicted for 99 years in prison. Unfortunately, he only managed to serve 29 out of those 99 years before he died in prison. Number 3. The Iceman I would move heaven, hell, and anything in between to get to you. You wouldn't be safe anyway if I was mad at you. And that's not bull, Dip. That's the truth. When there's an entire movie made about you based on your gruesome history, you must have done some pretty bad deeds. Richard Kuklinski was an American murderer and hitman. In an interview after his conviction, he said that he has killed over 100 people. His preferred method of killing was cyanide, although he said that he varied the way he took a person's life. There was one time where he shot a man with a shotgun and completely decapitated him. I've went up against people. You could pull a gun on me and if I'm mad at you, I'm coming forward. Other times he would use his three guns and a knife to get the job done. The nickname the Iceman was given to him because they found a body of a man stored in his freezer because he didn't want the police to become suspicious. Because Richard has said he feels nothing when he kills a person, some people even call him the devil. You'd have to shoot me to stop me. And if you don't kill me, you're stupid. Number two, Marcus Julius Brutus. Et tu brut? is the phrase Julius Caesar uttered when he saw his longtime friend had plotted against him. When Caesar became the dictator over the land and its people, many were furious because this meant that there would be no need for the Senate. Conspiring against the Emperor, Brutus assembled a group of around 40 Senate members who devised a plan to kill the Emperor. When Caesar finally walked into the building, he was distracted by Tullius. In an argument with the man, he pulled his toga, and that's when they all attacked him. They stabbed his body left and right, and in the rage, they even stabbed each other. They were later emaciated by the Senate, which made people question the decision and revolt. Brutus left Rome and settled in Crete. Number 1. Gavrilo Princip He's the guy that managed to start the entire war all by himself after assassinating the Archduke Franz Ferdinand of Austria as well as his wife. The police captured him. This even caused major unrest in the region and eventually turned into the First World War. The guy's motives were finally to get rid of the Austro-Hungarian rule in Bosnia and Herzegovina and join all of the Yugoslav republics under one name and one state. The existence of the Austro-Hungarian Empire prevented this from happening. Although he did not live long enough to see his dream come true, Joseph Broz Tito 
managed to unite all of the Yugoslavian countries into what is known as the Socialist Federal Republic of Yugoslavia. And on that note, we end this video. But hey, what are some of the other deadly assassins you know of? You can tell us in the comments section below. And if you'd like more videos like these, don't forget to subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon so you never miss any of them. And as always, thanks for watching guys.